One of the things that comes with home ownership is the responsibility of having to deal with everything that happens to that home. When something needs repair, you can either call a professional or you can attempt to fix it yourself. DIY home repairs and improvements can save you a lot of money, but you also run the risk of making the problem worse. How much of this stuff you want to tackle yourself is something you'll have to decide on a case by case basis. Start with projects that aren't emergency repairs. But no matter your experience, Experience with DIY home projects, there are seven tools I believe every homeowner should have right from the start. These are versatile tools that you can use for all kinds of projects. Just get them all at once and save yourself the hassle of having to make multiple trips to the home center. For this list, I'm not including tools that you'll inevitably pick up as needed for specific projects you decide to tackle, say a caulking gun if you want to install a sink or replace baseboards or like a hacksaw for cutting through pipes. And even though this is a woodworking channel, I'm not including woodworking specific tools. Got it? I'll include links to all these tools down in the description. The only power tool on my list is a drill, or better yet, a drill and an impact driver. These are often sold as a pair. The impact driver is used for driving and removing screws. It works much better for this than a drill. A drill is used mostly for, surprise, drilling holes. If you want to hang a shelf on a wall, you'll need to drill a hole for an anchor. And you can use the impact driver for driving a screw into a stud or anything else. Be sure to check out my video on drill and driver basics. Along with these, get a set of drill and driver bits. Large sets are pretty inexpensive. In addition to drill bits, make sure it has an assortment of driver bits. Phillips tips, star tips, hex tips, even sockets. You may be surprised how often you'll need a wrench to tighten up a bolt or a nut. I recommend a complete set of combination wrenches. These will have an open end on one end and a box wrench on the other end. It's probably a good idea to get a kit that comes with both metric and imperial sizes. I also suggest getting an adjustable wrench. There's times when you need to tighten a bolt that's the same size as the nut on the other end and having that adjustable wrench is handy. Even if you have a power drill or driver, there's lots of tasks where that's just more tool than you need. Say if you want to replace a switch plate and need something a little bit more delicate. Plus slotted screws still exist and are easier to drive by hand. A screwdriver will also give you a much better sense of how much torque you're applying to a screw. If you just need to tighten up a loose screw on say a cabinet, that'll prevent you from over tightening it or even stripping the threads that you might do with a drill. Like with the wrenches, you can get an assortment of screwdrivers pretty inexpensively. You can also get these kinds of multi-purpose screwdrivers that let you use the same driver bits that you use in your drill or impact driver. There's just no way around it. You're gonna need a hammer. Use it for hanging pictures on the wall, tapping things into position, or even demolishing things. A 16 ounce hammer is good for just about everything. Thing. There are lots of times when you're going to need to get a firm grip on something and there are all kinds of pliers to help. I suggest getting a slip joint plier and a needle nosed plier. The slip joint is kind of a general purpose plier used for lots of tasks. Maybe you need to remove a rusty fastener from a fence and a needle nose plier is great for holding anything tiny and you'll use it for some electrical work. I also recommend getting one of these sliding channel locks. These are great for grasping large bolts, fasteners, or even removing tight lids. You can get all of these pliers in a set. Hex screws are more common than you might realize, going way beyond just assembling IKEA furniture. You'll encounter them on bikes, electronics, cars, even certain tool adjustments. They're very common when in installing towel bars and light fixtures, say for your bathroom and kitchen. And someday when some of that stuff needs tightening up, you probably didn't save that hex key that came with it. So do yourself a favor and get a set of hex keys, also known as Allen wrenches. I recommend getting a set of individual wrenches rather than one of those foldable kinds. You can get more torque with them and they'll fit into tighter spaces. You probably already have a tape measure, but if you just moved from an apartment into your first home, you're going to be surprised at how often you just need to measure stuff. If you want to, say, paint a room, you're going to need to know the square footage 
so that you can buy paint. You'll need to know how big rugs are to buy. And if you have a yard, you're gonna to need to measure spaces for any landscaping that you do. And those are just a few things. I suggest getting a 25 foot tape measure. That'll be useful for almost every need. One thing a lot of new homeowners discover as they start taking on repairs around the house and accumulating tools is that they might start buying tools to build things. DIY projects can be a gateway into woodworking. It starts with a screwdriver and the next thing you know, you're, you're parking the cars out on the driveway, setting up a table saw and making coffee tables. Quick plug for myself, woodworking is a fantastic hobby. If you're curious as to what tools you'll need to get started and how much it's gonna cost, I've got a free guide to getting all the tools you'll need to set up a modern woodworking shop for less than $1,000. It's probably a lot less than you were thinking. Head over to mytoollist.com and check it out today. One last bit of advice, keep everything in one place. That could be a dedicated space in the garage or a toolbox. Tools have a tendency to wander off if they don't have homes. Thanks for watching.